Research for more than one of my video ideas has led me here, Tristan de Cuna. With an area of less than 50 square miles across six islands and a population of 250, this volcanic island chain is the most remote inhabited place in the world. So how did human life begin on this archipelago? What makes it so incredibly difficult to settle? Is it possible to access an accessible island? Let's find out. This, as I'm sure you know, is the Atlantic Ocean. As the second largest ocean on Earth, it covers 20% of the globe. Under all that water, the ocean floor features a massive underwater mountain range known as the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. This ridge has an average depth of around 6,600 feet. Most of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is underwater, but where it rises above sea level are volcanic islands. Nine of these islands are nominated World Heritage Sites, four with outstanding universal value. One of these sites is Goth and Inaccessible Islands of Tristan de Cunha. The main island of this archipelago was first spotted in 1506 by Portuguese Admiral Tristão de Cunha on his way to the Cape of Good Hope. De Cunha couldn't land due to rough waters, but he did name the biggest island after himself. From there, Tristan began appearing on nautical maps in 1509. Some say the Portuguese made landfall on Tristan de Cunha in 1520, but for certain, the Heemstead of the Dutch East India Company docked at the island in 1643. Over the next few decades, the Dutch returned and created the first rough charts of the archipelago. The first permanent settler, Jonathan Lambert from Salem, Massachusetts, arrived in 1810 with a man named Williams and a worker, Thomas Curie. They were later joined by Andrew Millet. Lambert claimed the islands as his property and named them Islands of Refreshment. On May 17, 1812, Lambert, Millet, and Williams all left the island on a fishing trip and never came back. Thomas Curie lived on and farmed, having never received payment from Jonathan Lambert for his years of work on the island. During the War of 1812, the United States began keeping ships at the island, which led Britain to annex Tristan in 1816, making it a dependency of Cape Colony, South Africa. This was done also to keep any French off the island who may have been planning to free Napoleon Bonaparte, who was imprisoned on St. Helena at the time. Britain abandoned the islands the following year, but two Masons and one Marine, Scottish Corporal William Glass, chose to stay behind with his family to settle on the island. The population slowly grew. When the HMS Berwick visited in 1824, the island had a population of 25. However, with the opening of the Suez Canal in 1869 and the increase in coal-fired steamships, the islands grew more and more isolated. Perfect setting for a business built on tourism, right? Meet Gustav and Frederick Stoltenhoff, two German brothers fresh out of the Franco-Prussian War with dreams of starting a trading post in Tristan. But not on the main island, on uninhabited, inaccessible island. The brothers didn't know how to build shelter, for one. Also, despite the foundation of their businesses relying on the catching and skinning of seals, they didn't know how to catch or skin a seal. They somehow forgot supplies like ropes and candles. Their fishing boat and shelter were destroyed by bad weather, repeatedly. To make matters worse, the Tristanians got a real kick out of tormenting them by stealing their supplies and shooting their goats. And to top it all off, the dog and puppies the brothers brought onto the island ran off and all became feral. Honestly, any modern deli employee with access to Google could have probably done a better job than these guys. As Eric Rosenthal described in his 1952 book, Shelter from the Spray, when penguins came onto the small island, it took days for the brothers to finally kill one. Instead, they found themselves pecked and once or twice even knocked over by the vigorous antics of their opponents. After two full winters on the island, the brothers had only managed to kill 19 seals, whose pelts they traded for biscuits, naturally, and finally accepted rescue off the island. Because the name Inaccessible had already been printed in atlases, the brothers couldn't name the island after themselves. When leaving though, they passed a pretty big rock off Nightingale Island that they named Stoltenhoff Island, so that's nice. One of Tristan's other islands lies 250 miles to the southeast. This is Gough Island, a haven for seabirds. Like inaccessible in Nightingale Islands, it's also uninhabited, but only technically. Gough Island has a constant human presence, thanks to the South African National Antarctic Program Weather Station. The team consists of a senior meteorologist, two junior meteorologists, a radio technician, a medic, a diesel mechanic, and a number of biologists, depending on the research at the time. Once a year, this team is fully replaced. Only a few vessels visit Gough Island annually, so the new group brings enough food to last them the entire year. 
So if after hearing all of this, you'd like to visit Tristan da Cunha or access Inaccessible Island, what would it take to get there? First, book a flight to either Cape Town, South Africa or Ushuaia, Argentina. You can't fly directly to the islands. They don't even have a landing strip. Second, find a ship that's going by the island. This might be a fishing ship, a research vessel, or a commercial cargo ship. Next, spend eight days at sea. And that's the best case scenario. Okay, so your ship's finally made it to Tristan da Cunha's Harbor. I hope the weather's good because you'll be taking a dinghy or a helicopter to actually get on the island. Okay, you made it to Tristan da Cunha. There are no hotels or Airbnbs, so you'll have to sleep on the ship. Want to go one step further and access inaccessible? First, you'll need permission from the Tristanian government. Next, sail 28 miles southwest to Inaccessible Island. Oh, and you can only land there for about one week out of the year around New Year's, so I hope you thought about that before now. Congratulations, you made it to Inaccessible Island. There's a beach, and a research cabin, and a lot of cliffs, and that's about it. So the next time you want to just get away from it all, consider taking a trip to Tristan da Cunha, where you can realize the problem was never your environment or the people around you, but only you yourself. Huh. He met these young scientists and explorers and enjoyed the comradeship of men who are cut off from the world, except for radio contact, for months at a time. Far from busy Melbourne, where he had opened the Olympic Games, he took part in what is believed to be the first game of tennis ever played inside the Antarctic Circle. <laughs> 